Morning guys, um, as promised, today I'm going to be doing um, a little demonstration on how basic synthesis works. I'm going to be using the Model D for this demonstration, just because in my personal experience when I first started out, simps like this, with all the knobs, no screen, etc. They're really intimidating and no matter what you seem to press, it was just it was just noises and you didn't feel like you were getting anywhere at the beginning, but it all changes. And if you look into synthesis and learn it properly, um, it's definitely, it's something, it's so much, it's so worth doing it. I mean, you've got, you've, you know, on a lot of machines, you've got patches and stuff like that, but there's nothing like starting from scratch, getting a sound and making it, you know. So all this video is going to be, is just explaining to the beginners how it works how to get a sound going on something like this. Um, yeah, so let's get stuck right in. So basically, I've opted to do it on this machine. I told you why. The only unfortunate thing is there isn't a dedicated release button. As you know, there's, um, on a synthesizer, there is attack, decay, sustain, and then normally a release. On this, the decay and the release are combined. And that is only if you put press this button here, which is loud decay. So. Let's get some sound going. Turn the decay up. Now, when you first turn any synth on, you just hear that, you think, wow, how am I going to get some good sounds out of, that, out of this? What this is, is it's a sine wave. So over here, we've got our waveforms. We've got sine. This is like a shark tooth. We'll go through them now, so that's your sine. That's your shark tooth. There's a bit, it's, it's sort of like in between a sine wave and a sawtooth wave. A sine wave is a very smooth wave. It's 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 used a lot in like sub basses and stuff like that. You know, if you take the octaves down and we've got sawtooth, which is very popular. Take that down an octave. Take that glide off. I've actually got a bit of glide on there. Um, square wave. You hear that wave quite a lot in your old Nintendo games. Yeah, I think we've got two different variations of a pulse wave, which is similar to a square wave, and um, it's it's a wave which is very good. Um, if you modulate it, um, you know, get it moving around, it can sound wide and big. And the last one. So what we're going to do is we're going to start on the sawtooth wave. So as I said over here, you've got your loudness contour. That's what it's labeled as on here, which is basically um, this is your amplitude and the attack, decay, sustain and release um, sort of sculpts the volume of the sound. So attack determines how long the volume takes to get to maximum level. So if you turn this up, instead of a snappy sound, it fades in. Take that up to five seconds. Then it goes back down to nothing. So for a plucky sound, you'd have this really loud. That is reaching the maximum volume of the sound rapidly. Now the decay is how long it stays at that maximum volume for. So as you can imagine, if we have this really low, when you take it away, it's basically a click. You turn that up. like a plucky sound you'd have no no attack tiny bit of delay uh, decay sorry so we're going to leave that about there for now now sustain 
if you can imagine the envelope goes up to so say we add a little bit of attack, it goes up like that. And then the decay goes down. And here's our bottom level. The sustain is where it levels off. And it's the volume where it stays. So at the minute, that's just disappearing. Now, if we had a bit of sustain, that will rise up, drop back down, and that will stay at a certain level. So if we put that on two, it should stay at a really low volume, but it'll be there until you take your finger off the key. A little bit louder. Longer decay. And we'll add a little bit of attack. So it should really, it should slope nicely this and then sustain at a certain level. So we're going like that, back down and even out. It's sustained down a little bit. Take the decay down a little bit so we're not waiting so long for that sustain. Like I said, normally on a standard ADSR envelope, which is the, again, that all that means is your volume. So attack, decay, sustain, there is a release. Um, like I said on this, it is combined with the decay. So, and what the release does, it's how long that sound takes to fizzle out once you've took your finger off the button. So we'll turn this on. We'll see what happens here now. We'll take the sustain down for now. Now we've out. As soon as I'm taking my finger off the button, it's going. We put that back on. Take this up. And this sound should take quite a while to fizzle out. Because like I said, the release is combined with this on this. Now, if you can get this right with this, you can get it right with any synth that's got standard amp envelope with the ADSR. even longer Let's take the attack up and what we've done here is we basically shaped the sound for like a it could be like a pad so we could have the attack going up nice and slowly the decay going down quite slowly we could have it sustaining at a certain level, and then when I take my finger off the key, it's still going to be there. So let's listen to this. So let's take this back down. Now this is a monophonic synth, so you wouldn't wouldn't usually use it for pads. I mean, because you know you with pads you want big chords, etc. It's a mono synth and it's more for basses, but you can still get really interesting when you play with the envelope. So we're back down to nothing. Clicks. So let's get a plucky sound going. Take our decay up, no attack, so it's going straight up. Quick slope down. We'll have no sustain because I don't want it to sustain. And we'll take the loud decay off because I don't want um, the sound to remain there once I've took my finger off the key. Now, as you can see, with the volume, it's going up and it's quite loud. Um, it's full of harmonics. And that takes us to the filter section. So on these clones, it's a 24 dB per octave filter, which all that means, it's a low pass filter what I'm going to be using here. And all that means is um, every octave, a 24 decibel slope is cutting out frequencies as we take it down. So let's play it.
can hear that little click at the beginning of the sound because we've got that short decay time. So if we just add a tiny bit of attack, we should get rid of that. So yeah, that's controlling how much of the, um, what frequencies we get let through. So like I said, it's a slope and this is going down and it's just taken out. So if we go down to the bottom, it's left with nothing. And as we go up, it slowly starts letting the low frequencies through. leave it there for now on here we've got filter emphasis which on other simps is known as resonance so what this does is like like i said on your filter you've got yeah um, you've got an even line and then you've got your slope which is taking out the um the frequencies and what this will do is it will emphasize certain frequencies in the sound so that slope will be like a standard slope like this We'll have a peak. And what if we turn that off? We'll turn off cutoff frequency right up. As we come down in the cutoff frequency, different frequencies will be emphasized. So that's emphasizing the highs at the minute. That's why we've got a load of crisp sound in the high end. So yeah, basically all that is doing is literally it's emphasizing frequencies and that's how you sort of, you'd go about that to get like acid sounds. Now obviously an amplitude envelope is just you know, the volume, the shape of the sound itself, the shape of the volume is just one part of it. What we've actually got here, this here is our filter envelope. And it works exactly the same as the um, loudness contour, the amplitude envelope. And um, what we can do with this is we can move our filter. So let's just get back to a really simple sound. Take that down frequency up, don't want any resonance right now. So what this is going to do, if you can imagine our slope, this is going to act exactly the same, same slope, but it's for the filter. So it's the way the filter moves across the spectrum. So if we had a small amount of attack, in fact, no, we'll keep it as no attack for now. So that filter goes right up. Okay. How long that filter is going to stay at that certain frequency for? And sustain. We won't use sustain for this one. Now you'll find, well, I've got no sound. Um, Basically, what you've got to do, well, you have got sound, but you've got the same sound. It's not doing anything. So this here, this controls your filter envelope. It's the amount of contour. Like I said, it's worded differently on these. So this would be filter envelope. This would be resonance. Obviously, this would be a full ADSR, ideally, on a synth. Um, yeah, some things are worded differently. Um, so we turn this off. You say, well, why are we still getting the same sound? And that's because the filter is trying to move up, but it can't go any more up because the cutoff frequency is already at the top. So if we take it down, and let's take this envelope off a second for the filter, we still get that. When we start taking it up, this around a little bit this will be really plucky now so 
So this is the frequency it'll start off. That's the amount that the filter is going to move. And that is how it's going to move. So we could have it, if we take the attack up on the loud, on the amplitude, we could have this filter swoop in. Stay around for a second or two, and then go. You're starting to get a cool sound now. Now you can take your filter cut off so you can get it start from lower. You throw a bit of resonance in, and that peak is going to move around with the filter. Take the envelope up a little bit more. Take that down a bit more, but take about, take the amount that the filter is going to move up even more. And as this moves up, this will have less room to move, but it's nice to modulate. And what you could do, like on, on, like sort of on um, other synthesizers, you could, you could have this the contour amount here, so the filter to how much the envelope opens. You could have this modulate. So basically, you could have it move over time in the track. Um, so say we started here. You know, tracks like to build up. You know, you know, you want a nice progression going. So. Mm -hmm. All I did with that was turn it up, so it was moving that much, then it's moving more and more and more. I'm getting near enough to full sweep. So yeah. That's the basics anyway, guys, you know, that's how filter envelopes work and that is how um, amplitude envelopes work. Um, so I'll do like an example of how you would get like a, like an acid sound using these. So I'm going to take my amplitude envelope down, the attack, we'll have the decay sitting around the 11 o'clock, I have no sustain. Filter envelope. For now, we'll probably have the decay sitting around the nine o'clock. No sustain, no attack. Or a tad of it. No, we'll have no attack. We'll have the cutoff frequency there. And we'll have the resonance maybe between 11 and 12 o'clock. We'll start off with low movement on the filter. <laughs> Take that resonance on now. It's just a case of sitting down and playing with this, you know. Um, like I said, it's very intimidating at first. You can, you know, play play around with this and it's the, the shape of your sound is the most important before you go adding other things in. So yeah, so let's get it back to um let's get it back to a normal sawtooth sound. And we'll have a look at the oscillators. So we'll have no filter envelope for now. Bit of sustain, decay. <laughs> So on this here, basically, all we're hearing is one oscillator. We're making sounds with one oscillator at the minute. And on this, there is three oscillators. So um, this is your volume. So we've got 
nothing. And we've got full volume. This here changes the tuning. Um, yes, we can look at oscillator two now. So oscillator two. Um, this is your. This is like your um, course tuning here. So you can go up seven semitones, down seven semitones. I'll show you that now. All we're going to do for the sake of this is just bring in another sawtooth. On these longer sounds, even like on, on analog devices like this, there's no saying that you're going to be perfectly in tune with the other oscillator. So you might hear that, that phasery type sound. So you can play with this anyway and get it as close as possible. Probably as close as I'm going to get it on this device, to be honest with you. Let's have a look. Ah, there we go. So, just underneath the center point. Sounds a bit better. got there now is we've got two oscillator going both sawtooth waves and um, we've synced them as much as possible so we haven't got that phasery sound there's no option to sync on the model d unfortunately but you know it's uh, you, you still get a lot for the price um so we could change the pitch of the second one to be a little bit higher than the first or we could go lower So you could do it with that, but then you get the same issue as what I've just had. Then you have to tune it very finely to get it bob on for them, you know, them sync lead sounds. However, with it being monophonic, it's got its limitations, obviously. But you could, you know, you can do chord type sounds, so you could take it up five semitones. Let's put the range. The octave on the same. Take that filter down. And then obviously the same thing again is we could introduce the third oscillator. And we could have that. We could take the pitch right down on that and leave it as a sine wave, because like I said, sine waves are really good as sub bases. Without to take that up a bit. Can't really hear it, it's gone that low down in the range, can't really hear it. There it is. Let's just turn these other two off. Very soppy. Bring them over two back in. Obviously, you've got limitations on these type of devices. You've got, you know. Um, the the ADSR 
applies to all three oscillators. So whatever shapes you've got going, it's going to apply to all three. Um, let's have a look. Let's have a look at some of the other waveforms. So we'll take oscillator three off for now. Does it really need a sub? That's going to be used as a sub. You could use it. So you could tune it. Let's just have a look now. Take that volume down. So we've got these two going. We've got the two sawtooths. We've got one um, which is bang in the center. So there's no way. Um, that's the other thing as well for oscillator one on this. There's no way uh, fine tuning control. And then obviously we've got this five semitones up. And then we could go another two semitones up on the oscillator three, the sawtooth, and keep the range the same. And bring the volume in. You can have a really play good play around with them. But the, the, the good thing about this before, obviously, we were struggling to get that synced sound. But then on the reverse side of things, it's absolutely outstanding for your big detuned basses. So we could like go six, take that down, take the volume of this down, take the volume of this down. And just detune them a few tenths. I'm going to bring this in. So what's happening is like, so, so throughout, throughout, you know, throughout phase and um, the more you go towards the semitone up, the more they start coming back into phase. So it's that, that that movement sounds quicker. When you just start moving out of it, it's very slow. And it'll get a bit slower, then it'll get quicker, then it'll be perfectly in tune. I'll show you that now. So as we're getting around to here, you can barely even hear any detune. You know, obviously it's um, seven semitones up. We'll go back down, get slower and slower and slower. So for these big detuned bases, you could have it like kept there, and then with your filter. And obviously with a bit of extra processing, reverbs and stuff like that, you know, that's when it starts to sound really good. Uh, yeah, but that's for another day. So um, what else is there on this little beast that I can show you? Ah, you've got, so this is this is handy as well. You've got your noise volume. People go, oh, what do I want? What do I want white noise for? Well, you can shape it. So it's really good for percussive noises, actually. So we'll take the oscillators down. And we'll turn the white noise. You've got an option between white noise and pink noise. And then you think, oh, what noise going to make out of this? Well, you think like, you think about, I don't know, a hi-hat. No, a hi-hat or closed hat. That quick, snappy sound. Well, think about your weapons of choice here so you think right okay it's a snappy sound you know high hat or closed hat hasn't really got much sustain hasn't really got much decay i 
and now that is basically a hat. So let me just sequence that in. As a percussive sound just start using white noise now you're hearing like i'd like to like stephen bodson's stephen bodson however you want to pronounce it his music uses a lot of noise and it's really good for atmosphere so it's not really a purpose of this video, but if you start adding reverb, let me just program in some reverb. Why am I not getting reverb? There we go. Filter as well, another weapon of choice. Almost like a train. Now you've got that you've got that sound, you could go right. Well, how much do I want that filter to move and open? It can't be too much because it's only a snappy sound, so let's just move that. Take the decay off. I want that filter to open up and close really fast. Resonance also applies to noise. So yeah, this, you know, it's very interesting what you can do. And then again, you've got pink noise, which I believe is just like white noise with a little bit more. It's got lower harmonics. Um, Let's have a look here. Ah, one more thing I want to go through before I go. Like I said, I'll be going through all this in more detail about sculpting sounds and that. I just wanted to get you beginners going. So on this synth here, you've got your LFO. So it's your modulations, uh, modulation section. So. Oh. Wrong MIDI track. The sound going again, so like I said, we look at our loudness. Okay, let's just get it a big, big whopping sound in your face. Let's take that reverb off. So, yeah, LFO basically very fast knob tune and um, very fast knob mover <laughs> um, so yeah you can have the LFO um, basically instead of playing with this while we're pressing keys for interest we can actually have um, an LFO do it so if you look down here this is your mod section so we've got LFO noise, oscillator, free, filter, envelope generator. That is a little bit more advanced, so I'm not going to go into that today. All I'm going to go into is the LFO, moving the pitch and moving the filter. So let's have a look at that. So we've got mod mix, turn to noise slash LFO. We've got a switch, turn to LFO. Then we're going to take the mod depth up. I need LFO right up. Now we're not hearing anything. Why? Because the filter modulation button isn't on. All that LFO is doing is moving this up and down. 
so we could speed it up. Get that filter moving more, forever. You know, it's like simple, like vibrato. And you know, we'll do that on tune. So that's your, that's your LFO for your filter. So let's have a look what else there is. So oscillator modulation, take that off. So this one here is actually, it's getting the LFO to modulate the tune. So we take away that resonance for now. Just get this. Back to our normal sound. Let's change the wave just for a little bit of variation. Um, so we could look at that and go, All right, okay, we've got a square. Um, let's modulate the pitch of that square. So basically this. Um, take the mod depth up. But like a tremolo sort of sound, you know, you, you, you wouldn't really need to take the mod depth up because you don't really want it moving too much and it sounds a mess. Take the LFO rate off. go crazy put the mod depth for so yeah you can get some very interesting sounds with that now last thing i want to go through is how the lfo moves so with this switch down the lfo is moving smoothly now, there's a square LFO, which you switch it to, and it's very juttery. If you went through this, you could probably make an interesting sort of like bass line or something out of it. But let's show you that. So we'll take the mod depth right down, LFO right down. So yeah, as you can see, it can get really interesting. So for me, I don't want to bash your brain with too much, um, but I think I've given you the basics now. You just remember that when you turn the synth on and your initialized patch and it's just, it's, that's not, that's just the beginning point. Get sculpting, get the sound, get the shape. Interesting. Start moving the filter, start moving the pitch if you want, add effects play with these wave waveforms here and just go crazy with it. So I hope 
that have helped you out a little bit. You know, in the future, I'll probably go through to uh, go through the patch bay options and some more modulation options and the you know the glide and stuff like that. But for today, I think that's um, everything you need to see to get going and start making some tunes. So I hope this video has helped and um, we we'll be making many more. So subscribe and um, I'll see you soon, guys. Cheers.